Hey everyone, Chris Bark here, and today I want to show you a demonstration of our bar repo system. Um, it's a bar management software really, so it does everything for your business from managing your stock control to putting sales through, to having customer loyalty and marketing. It's all built within one package, uh, all specifically designed to help business owners like you grow their business. The first section I want to talk to you about today is security. Now, I know in your bar, security is massively important, particularly when it comes to members of staff. Um, I know that there's always uh, issues with money going missing, etc. The good thing about our system is it reports everything that could be a theft by a member of staff, but it also allows you to give access or deny access to every feature within the software. So the way that works is you can log in in one of three ways. You can log in on a username and password, like so. So if you're using a tablet, you'd have a username and password on there probably. Um, if you've got a fully post system like that, you can log in using a card like so. Or you can do what most businesses that have got a full system like this do, which is use fingerprint. So when I press my thumb on it, you'll see down the bottom it says Chris. If I go to say accounting and pretend this is a different person, so if I use a different finger and log in like so, it switches off everything within uh, the system. So I can't do things on accounting. If I come back on as an owner of a business like so, I can put my thumb on it and I can get full access. Um, this is designed specifically to allow bars like yourselves to actually be able to actively control who's got access to which features. Um, it reports anything that could be a theft uh, and I can testify that this works because in my retail stores I've caught three people who stole over £3,000. If you want to see how we went about catching them, watch one of our other videos on our YouTube channel. The next section I want to go through is the sales screen. Now, I know the sales screen is probably your most vitally important part of your system because it's the part that allows you to take money off your customers. So with that being said, we've designed a layout specifically for bars like yourselves and we actually know that it's going to help you to speed up the way that you serve your customers. So if I go into sales layout, if you see the way this store is laid out, we've set up food and drink separate so that you can have completely, you know, if you serve food, you've got the ability to show it. If not, I can just show you the drink section. Uh, we've got exactly the same layout actually running on our tablet as well at the same time. Now, the way that it, it's designed, if you don't like the way this store looks, don't worry about it. Uh, if you see on the screen now, there are loads of different layouts on the screen. You can make it look however you want. You can drag, drop, you can change colours, you can add pictures. Whatever you want to make it fit your business needs, uh, you can do through our system. It's really simple. Um, so. Let's actually put a transaction through it. I'll show you how easy it is to do that. So if I want to serve a pint of carling and a cockberg, then you can do that. If I want to make it three pints, I can do three. And it'll do three carling pints at £3.60. The total then run at the top at £15.25. Now, you can have it so that your receipt is on, like I've just done now, and then I'm going to change. So if I want to put a transaction through and they want to give me £20 cash, when I press cash draw like so, cash draw will open, it will work out your change for you at the top at 4 75 and it will print your receipt. The receipt will have your store logo on it, if you want a receipt this is, uh, your logo, uh, address, phone number, uh, order number, till number, who you served by, date and time, what you bought, that total tender change, any slogans you want. It's even got the ability to have the likes of a QR code that will link to your Facebook page, your website, your YouTube channel, anything you want can all be on there. So, uh, as you can see, it's really quick and easy to actually uh, serve a customer. If I go back to drinks again, uh, if I want to have want to serve multiple people so if I want to have some diet Pepsi some ginger ale etc I can then go uh, we'll add a pint of Guinness a pint of Strongbow I want to do a whiskey a gin bean single uh, it's going to ask me the question are they over 18 in this case I'm going to say yes so you can have warnings on each product if you want so you've got age restrictions obviously that can work on all your products including obviously your beers and stuff but we've got it switched off for demo purposes um, so once I've said yes, it would let me actually put the transaction through. Now, do you see, do you serve food in your bar? If you do, you can then add food to it as well. So if I wanted to do uh, a couple of burgers with it as well, I can do that. When I complete the transaction in this particular scenario, so I don't know whether you do whether you do table service or whether your people have to go to the bar uh, to actually get served. In this case, say someone's come to the bar, if they were to give me forty pounds cash. Uh, cash roll will open. What this is going to do this time is it's going to print multiple receipts for me. So I've actually got four different receipts. We've got the same receipt that I had before, which was the uh, the receipt for the customer. 
I've got, um, so the, the reason we've printed four is you can have multiple printers around your bar. So you could have one that's in your kitchen that's doing the food. You can have another one uh, that's doing the other food in the other kitchen. So you could have two different kitchen printers and you've also got the ability to have all your drinks print out of a drinks uh, printer separate to your till. You could have all these come out of your till or you can have them go to different uh, different printers around your store um, or around your bar should I say. So what that means is you can actually you know in the kitchen they can stick up or they can like stick to the side the food order that's actually come in and actually it's got down which table it's for etc if you pick the table. Now if you actually want to do table service the way you do that is you pick your table so if I want to say table number one we can then start taking the order. So we could do uh, I don't know, a couple of burgers. We want to do uh, some, a pizza as well, like so. And then we want to take some drinks with it. So we want to add, uh, I don't know, we'll add some soft drinks. So we want to do a Pepsi, a Diet Pepsi, and a lemonade. So all that is now actually saved against table number one. So it means we can go back and we can serve someone else. So we could be serving putting through a vodka single for cash and we've actually got the ability to go back to the table layout at any point so I can go to the table number one and all the stuff is still there so your totals run across the top now another problem that normally comes up in bars and things is when people want to start splitting the bills great thing you've got is you've got a bill calculator on here whereby you can say we've got I don't know three uh, people who have actually ordered on that table and we can actually split the bill out so we could say that uh, customer number one has got a veggie burger and a diet pepsi and what it'll do is it'll say that customer number one owes 9.95 we can then put them into the cart and they can pay individually uh, for their transaction now loads of other things you can do at point yourself so you might have a problem whereby uh, you need to like waste some food so say all all that there was actually uh, had not been cooked properly by the kitchen, we can then do stock options and we can mark down as waste. What that will do for you is, it will take it off your stock, off your profits and report out for you how many meals you've had to write off. You could do the same way by, if you use it, you can do exactly the same but put it through as shop use. And what that will do is it will allow you to comp food if you've got to, um, you know, give someone a discount on their food. Um, so it will allow you to do that. Um, you can have the ability to send messages to the kitchen if you want, so we can send the message directly to the kitchen which will come through to them. You can also have uh, your print options. So the great thing here is you can print, so I can actually, let's put, sorry, I need to put some products in, so if we want to quickly shove, uh, don't know, a couple of burgers in again, and I'll quickly put a drink in, put some gin in, like so. If I want to do, if I click on the print options, I can print just the food, so I could just go, I'll select those to press accept. What that will do is that will print me out just that food, which can then have been sent to the kitchen, obviously, in that case. Uh, you can also do discounts if you want from there. So, do you have a discount within your bar? If that's the case, you can go special functions and we'll do discount. So, you might knock 10% off the cart because you're not happy with the service that they've got. So, we can knock 10% off like so. You could also say, in this case, all right. Well, what we'll do is we'll discount that. Pro uh, we'll discount it the whole uh, order down to twenty pound, and it will again record the discount. Just so you know, it records who's given the discount and who they've given it to, so you can keep track on um, if people are doing things they shouldn't behind the behind the till, basically. Um, there are loads of other things you can do on there. You can do diary and bookings where you can book tables in if you want. Uh, you can probably see there are loads of different staff options and customer options, till options, etc. I'm not going to bore you with them all. The last thing I will quickly show you is obviously we can move to a different cart, we can serve someone else. Let's go to cart one. So you can be serving multiple people at the same time. You can even have it so that the person who's logged in on the fingerprint has their own carts whereby um, so or their own tables so that all the stuff that's going through is against just that particular uh, member of staff. I personally wouldn't do it that way. I'd have it so everyone shares the tables and then if, if a member of staff goes on a break or something, you can then still process the transaction. Um, I hope you can see from this section how easy it is to put through sales uh, and how quickly you can actually improve your business and how it makes it quicker to serve customers you've got the ability as i say to set it up however your bar needs so you can have kitchen printers if you want you can have bar printers you can have 
uh, you can even have screens up if you want whereby it brings through what the actual order is uh, that needs to be made. Essentially everything we've done is about in improving the speed of you serving your customers because the quicker you can serve your customers the more people we can serve and the better service they get. The next section I want to talk to you about is stock. Now stock control can be vitally important to your bar. I don't know how much you use stock control at the moment but to me it's a vitally important part of the mix to growing your business. Um, if, you use, if you do stock control properly, it allows you to be much more efficient with your ordering, meaning you're not over ordering, meaning you're not running out of stock, and it also means that you become much more profitable by managing your stock properly. So with that being said, we've got a massive section on stock control, you've got supplier managers, price increases, type supplier manager. In stock, you can have, um, using all our stock manager, you can hold loads of information on products, you can even link products together. So. Um, you know, if you've got a particular meal that's made up of a certain number of ingredients, you can actually have those ingredients together against the main product. So when you sell the main product, it'll take X amount of cheese off or whatever. So you've got the stock manager. One, the section I want to talk to you about though is replenishing stock. So it's about reordering. Now, I don't know how you actually reorder within your business, but I know that most of you'll be reordering with a pen and pad. You'll be going around and making a note of what you need. Um, this is not a particularly efficient way of doing it. I used to do it in my retail stores. Uh, I did it for years in my retail stores. And we were really not actually that great at it. So we thought we were, but what we'd find is that we would um, we'd miss products, we'd overorder on some, we'd underorder on others. And more importantly, it was wasting hours and hours of our time every week. When we went from doing uh, manual orders like that to doing automated orders through the system, we managed to cut 18 man hours a week off our bill at the end of the year. You think how much that adds up to, 18 hours, and then add into the fact that we weren't actually brilliant at it. It's much easier to let the system do it for you, um, and then it makes you more efficient and means you get the products you need. So the way you create an order through the system is you can do a blank order uh, based on previous sales, or the one that most of us will do is based on minimum and maximum. And what that does is, it says when you get down to this level, take me back up to that level. So for instance, say on Corona, you might say when I get down to 10 bottles, reorder me three cases. As soon as you get below the 10 bottles, it'll take you back up to three cases. That's as simple as it can be. You pick your supplier you want to order from and you press accept. And what that'll do is that's created me an order for 954 pounds and 65p. If I press edit items, it'll show me every product I need to order based on what I've got in stock. So you can scroll up and down the list of what you need to actually order. It'll give you uh, statistics on every product, your total number you've sold, total lot sold last seven days, 14 days, last 30 days, most sold in a week, least sold in a week, average sold in a week. Basically, it gives you all your stats you could ever need. If you don't want products, so if I didn't want to buy those particular products, I can uh, delete items, it'll take them off the car. If I want to add other things from the suppliers on, I can search through and I can add to our order there and there. You can change highlight, highlighting, so it'll show you items you can buy cheaper from somewhere else. Now, I imagine you're like me, whereby you can buy the same product from multiple suppliers. If that's the case, you can allow the system to order and it will flag up if you can buy the product up cheaper somewhere else. Then you, allow, then you yourself can make the informed decision whether you want to get that product in or wait till you do an order with the place where you can buy it cheaper. Once you're happy with your order, you can do what you do now, which, you know, if you go to Cash and Carry, you can print it out if you want to print it out. You can email the order if you want to get the delivery. You can phone it through fax. However you do your ordering, it can be done through the system. The next section I want to talk to you about is statistics. So statistics are important for your business because it allows us to see how our business is performing to work out how we can grow it in the future. So we've got a statistics section that shows you through loads of things like we've got cashing up managers, uh, customer reports, staff manager, incident logs, chain stats. But the one I'm going to look at today is selected store stats. So we can basically pick any dates we want to look at. So we can say, uh, what have we done in the last 30 days basically? And it will show us um, every single product we've sold over that time frame. So if we go, uh, you know, so we, we've sold 187 lamb shanks. Uh, we've got supply cost, selling price, profit on every product. We've got gross income, net income, stock cost, profit off the VAT, VATable income, uh, VAT estimate, transactions, cash card, check, mail orders, vouchers, and on credit. You get the idea, there is lots of information if you want it. You've also got average income, uh, average stock cost, average net profit, average on the transactions. Your percentages, depending on how you work it out, uh, so you've got you know your markup and um, POR 
etc. We've also got past data, so how are we doing this is last week, last month, last year. We want them to all be green, and hopefully it will be if you're on a real database, on our fake database, we're showing some red, which shows we're doing a little bit worse than last year. If they're green, it means we're doing better than we were in the last time frame. Now, as well as that, you've got loads of criteria you can switch off and on, so you could just show cash purchases versus, versus car purchases. We've got keywords, we've got tills, we've got member of staff we can filter by, we can even filter by types, subtypes, etc. Now, once you've done all that, you've got charts and reports here, and you can basically um, produce hundreds and hundreds of reports within your business. There are so many that I'm not gonna bore you with showing them all, but I'll show you a few, just so you can work out how they would work for your business. So, you've got each day of the week, income, non expenditure, tax, profit, you can do it daily, weekly, monthly. You can look at best, uh, best income lines, worst income lines, best selling lines, worst selling lines, best profit lines, worst profit lines. You've got categories, so you could say how is uh, food versus drink, or within drink, how is alcohol versus soft drinks? Within alcohol, how is wine performing against beer, performing against spirits? And it breaks it all down for you there. You've got miscellaneous transaction report, which will show you anything that could be a theft by member staff, so anything that's suspicious. Uh, as I say, go on our YouTube channel if you want to see videos uh, on how I caught three staff stealing over £3,000. The videos are on there and it shows you what we did to catch them, but that's the report that you use. Uh, you've got petty cash overview showing money in and out the till. You've got repeat purchase offers, which shows you how your multi buyers or your special offers are performing. I won't bore you with the rest, so I'm just going to flick through. As you can see, there are hundreds and hundreds of reports. You've got uh, cash up reports, banking summaries. Uh, you've got staff performance reports which shows you how much money each member of staff makes, uh, what products they sell. Do you have certain members of staff who, you know, so to give you an idea in my store, I've got one member of staff who's got an average spend of 12 and another member of staff who's got an average spend of £28. Who do I want to be serving more customers? Obviously the person with the higher average spend. It allows us to go through and try and work on our staff to make them better. Um, quickly fire through the rest of these. You've got charts like this, so you've got income generator per hour a day, per day of the week per month, per member of staff per hour, that you get the idea there are so many, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of reports. Um, you even got the ability to have like uh, pie charts for your multi-sites and how they perform against each other and line charts against them as well. Suffice to say, if there's a set of data that you wanna get, the data is held within there and you can produce charts and reports on it. You can see how your business is performing. Once we know how our business is performing, we can do things to try and increase profits and sales by looking at what we're doing now and working out how we can improve that. As well as statistics, you've also got our new hub. So our new hub is uh, within there. You click on web portal. What this does is it brings up information about your businesses. So if you've got multi-sites like this store, you can do that. Whenever you press the button, it brings up all the info on that, so you can see an overview of your business just by clicking the button. So we can see how many new customers we've got, how many transactions we've had, products sold, income, best customer, non-loyalty card customers, loyalty sales, uh, total refunded. It breaks down every product you've sold there, so it's what your busiest hours of the day, so it'll show you busiest hours of the day, uh, you can do like average income transaction value. If you've got multi-sites, it will show you how each of these stores performs against each other like so. Um, you, know, you can see that the uh, store three does better than store one, etc. You can do income, new customers added. You can do loads. Basically, you can. It's this is like a hub for growing it uh, for using our software. So it's done from anywhere. You can do it on your tablet. You can do it technically on your phone. Uh, you can do it on a PC at home. It allows us to see basically what's going on in the business. You can also do things like manage your keys, so you can move your licenses around uh, on our piece of software. You can move, buy new keys if you want, you can move tills to new hardware if you want. It's basically your go-to place as a hub to allow you to overview what you do with our software. The next section I want to talk you through is customer loyalty. Now, in my mind, customer loyalty or CRM is the most vital thing you can do within your bar. It gives you the ability to grow your business whenever you feel like. The more you want to work on your customers, the more money you make. It's that simple. Um, you know, the the simple rule of thumb is that the more customers you've got, the more money your business is worth. The more data you hold on your customers, again, the more customer, uh, more money your business is worth. Essentially, if someone was to buy your bar, they're actually buying your customer base. So the better you have your customer base managed. Uh, the more money your business is worth. So, what we'll do is, I'll quickly show you how you sign people up. So we'll go uh, customer options and 
new customer. So you can have this button on your um, on your main sales screen. You can take you want to take a select amount of information off your customers. You want to know their full name. You want to take their postal address so you can write them a letter. You want to take their email address so you can send them an email, but so that you can also target them on Facebook, which you can do through our system. You can take that list and upload it as a custom audience. And you also want to take their mobile number so you can send them texts, uh, which will then allow you to upload it to Facebook and YouTube, etc., uh, as well as other Google platforms. So that's how you sign people up. Uh, what you normally would do from there is give them a loyalty card the likes of these and um, basically it's then got your branding in their purse or their wallet and it's there, it's constantly reminding them about your bar. So you want to try and reward people for signing up, so you want to give them things like discounts, you want to do maybe every 10th drink free, you might want to encourage them to come back all the time, so maybe if they spend £20 today they'll get a £10 off their next visit etc we basically want to there are only three ways to grow your business which is to get more customers which is the only way people think you can grow to increase your average spend and to increase the amount of visits that your customers have i want you to focus on those two because they're the easiest way to grow your business if i was coming in as a consultant i would not do it within your business if you didn't have one of our loyalty schemes because basically it makes me look good if we've got your loyalty scheme if you've got the loyalty scheme in place we can use the data and grow your business so that's what you give away the sort of stuff you start learning in return. So if we pick a particular customer, we can press individual customer stats, and this will show us how often this particular customer visits the business. So you'll see that they've been in most, or they've been in on a Monday, a Friday, and a Sunday within the business. It shows what hours of the day they come in. Um, their average spend of 51.98. So it's 51.98 for this customer, what is it for all customers? Uh, so all customers in store, your average spends £40.24. So it shows that customer's better than your average customer. So you might want to work with them a little bit more. It will show you things like refunds and saved with offers and yearly spend, etc. as well. Now, you can do, on the individual customer, it will show you what products they bought. So if they bought, say, uh, a cocktail, you could actually promote to people who've bought cocktails in the past with a cocktail offer. Um, you're going to get much more likely that they will... Uh, react to an offer if they've already already bought that product in the past. You can do that for one customer, but you can also do that for all customers within store. So we could go, let's have a look at uh, a chicken fillet burger. So we've done like 47 grand on chicken burgers in this bar. Um, what happens, what do people buy with it? So this is all customers. So it'll show us what products are bought with it. So you've got multi-buy offers, you've got veggie burgers. It shows that whenever someone buys that uh, chicken burger, you you buy they buy ten other products in store. And whenever someone buys this product, this chicken burger, the average spend in store is fifty three pound. So actually, the people who are buying that product are much better than your average customer. Now, how many products have you got like that? I would want to try and sell more chicken burgers because we know if we sell a chicken fillet burger, we're much more likely to increase our average spend. The more we increase our average spend, the higher our bottom line is, the more profit we make, etc. So I would want to focus on that. Uh, you can look at best spend periods. So you could do best spend weeks for all customers and press refresh and it will show us what our busiest weeks are, what our quantities are, what our transactions are. So it just gives us some stats. That's the information it gives you. From my mind, I want you to focus on how can you actually grow your business using it. So the great thing about our marketing campaign is you can start splitting your customers up into lists. So you might want to create a list. So you might want to do a list of uh, customers who spent over £200. So we want to look at customers who spent over £200. We can do that dead easy. Customers who spent over £200 uh, total in the last three years is greater than 200 pound and when i press recalculate it will show me that i've got 211 customers who spent over 200 pound within my bar that's quite useful for me i might want to then say and have not been in so we might want to say number of visits in the last two months is zero and that and out of the 211 it will show me that 132 of my best customers haven't been into my business within the last uh, two months. Is that useful for you? Uh, I've got a better question. How many customers have you lost within the last year? To give you an idea, in my store, I lost 1,286 customers in a year. Uh, we do loyalty very well, and I still had lost 1,286 customers. So 
Uh, if you want to see that video on how we found out who our lost customers were and what we did to get them back, uh, go on our YouTube channel uh, and you can actually see how we took those customers and reactivated them. Now, you might want to then try and send these customers a text. Well, if that's the case, you can then create a text. So I've already created one here, which is basically it's gone through. I type in what I want to say there and I've set up a voucher and then I can click on the campaign. I can press run. So if I press run campaign now, what this is going to do is it's going to create me, it's going to send me a text. So it's just sent me a text here, which it says, hi, Chris, uh, we've great weekend lined up with bands and other performers. We've missed you. Why not uh, have a round on us this weekend with £10 off your first order? And there's the text uh, with a voucher. We can then track who's come back in. To give you an idea, on my 1,286 customers that I'd lost, we managed to reactivate a couple of hundred of them and turn that into £12,000 in one weekend. Would that £12,000 be useful for you? Well, if you watch some of our other videos, you'll see how we turn that 1,286 customers into £80,000 over the next year. Another one you might want to use within your bar, you might want to take people's birthdays, for instance. So if we want to create a list, so we do birthday after, I can type. So I do birthday offer and I literally go to customer property and I want to say anyone who's got a birthday coming up within the next 14 days, press recalculate and 266 customers have got birthdays coming up within the next uh, 14 days. You can then send them a voucher for a, a drink on you on their birthday. How many of them would come in? You could do exactly the same with anniversaries. So, you know, I know, I know bars and restaurants who've made enough money off one marketing campaign, which is doing birthdays and anniversaries. They just do that, the only marketing they do. Whenever someone's got a birthday coming up, every, every uh, week they'll send out birthday cards with a birthday card and a voucher to be spent in store. About most people, probably between 30 and 50% of people spend those vouchers. But even the people who don't have a really good feeling about your business because you've actually sent them a birthday card and they feel like you've done it personally, even though it's the system who's done it. Uh, you can link that up to like sort of Docmail or Stamp.com and you can actually send out a birthday card or um, you know, a postcard or whatever you want specifically to those customers. If they get it through the post, they're much more likely to, um, to react to you. Uh, if you want to actually send them more personal ones, you can actually do birthday cards yourself print out a voucher which you can do through the system and send it to them. All I want you to do is think about how can you use your customer base to grow your business. We have all the features set up there, they come as standard. I want you to use them because the more you grow your business, um, the more you trust us and the more you stuff you buy off us in the future. Next I want to talk to you about screen advertising. So as you can see on this tilt, this has actually got a screen on the back of it. Now the screen on the back of it in this uh, bar is actually there to rotate adverts. So we've got it whereby it's showing uh, customers adverts for products we've got on offer, but it also, so in my store for instance, I charge reps to advertise on the back, I charge other local businesses to advertise on the back, and that gives me an income stream that pays for my till and actually gives me some extra income to my business. Now, as I say, you can see it's rotating adverts, so the adverts uh, run for as long as you want them to. We normally do about 10 to 15 seconds an advert, and then we put another one on, uh, and it does that automatically in like a, um, in a loop. So, as I say, the screen's advertising. Now, once you actually put products into the car, it goes from being an advertising screen, and the great thing about the advertising screen, just so you know, is that people stay in the queue on average five times longer if they've got something to watch or something to do. So it keeps people entertained whilst actually they're waiting to be served. But once you actually start serving the customer, so when I press a product, as soon as I put them into the cart, it actually puts them into the back screen. So it becomes a customer display. Now, a great thing about this for you is this can be mounted on the back of the till like it is now. It can also be mounted on other screens, uh, you know, facing the customers if you have this at the back of your bar, etc. Um, it will also, if we select a customer, it will suggest products that they should buy based on uh, what they normally buy if they haven't got it in, uh, if they haven't bought it today. So basically, as far as I'm concerned, the second screen's great because what it does is it gives you an income stream, it shows products uh, to your customers for them to buy, it keeps people entertained, it also doubles up as a customer display, showing them what they've bought and that, so that they know that they're not getting uh, ripped off by their bill, etc. Uh, so for me, every one of you should have your second screen running in store. It comes as standard on all our softwares. 
As well as using our full EPOS system, you can use tablet versions. Um, so in this case, we've got a tablet set up here and it's exactly the same version as what we've got on the main till. So if I want to put drinks through on here, I can literally put them through exactly the same way I would on the till. Now, this gives you the ability to be serving on, uh, on your bar floor, basically. You can go out, you can do table service. If you want to do table service, you can have these set up on stands uh, throughout your bar or um, throughout different zones if you want. Now, previously, if you've gone back a couple of years ago, near enough every, every single sale we ever made would have been a fully post system. Now I would say about 50, 60% are going onto tablets, etc., because they're a cheap alternative um, and essentially you're getting exactly the same version on that as what you are on here. Um, now, if you've got this set up, you can have it. So whenever you put a transaction through, it will link to your wireless printers like this. You can uh, link to your cash drawers, etc. Essentially, it makes it so that you've got exactly the same version as what you would have on the till, uh, but you're able to do it mobile. The good thing about them is you can actually take them home at the end of the day if you want, so you can be using them as a full version. You can use, um, you can be running your accounts through it, you can be managing your customers. Essentially, you can be doing everything you want from a tablet. So it gives you the ability to have um have a full version on this as well as on your main till the next thing i want to quickly show you is our app so we have a mobile version of our till that's on an app so basically you can do near enough everything that you could do on a till or on a tablet from uh, your mobile phone so i can do things like stock control i can do table service all from the app i can check how the business is performing so for instance if i'm not in my retail stores i can press statistics and i can view how much money they've done each day and every second of every day if i want i can do if we've got web orders and stuff in regards to bookings we can have them coming into the till um, and we can do things like change stats so if you've got multi-sites you can be looking at how they're performing the app basically gives you the ability to control your store from your mobile phone. Uh, this is our third version. Uh, so we've had an app of some sorts for the last 10 years. Uh, this version has been out for about the last six months. So you can probably see that we're constantly updating and adding features to our software at all times. That's it, that's the end of the demo. So thanks for watching our demonstration on our Bar Epos system. Uh, I hope you can see how it will help you grow your business. Um, if you want to take a trial of the software, you can click on the link below or you can go to bar.premiepostlive.com. Take a trial, see how it will work for your business. Uh, and then if you've got any questions, you can contact us and we'll help you through it. We've also got our own dedicated support team who will help you through everything you need to do on, on actually setting up the system. So thanks for watching. Goodbye.